Ahoy hoy, I'm Planet Walk, and sometimes you see someone who it kind of seems like they're trying to destroy their reputation in any way they know how. Tucker Carlson is one such person who has done some questionable interviews to say the least. But more recently I've seen a clip of him that's been floating around that it's so wrong that even if you agree with him, you should still be questioning the validity of his statements. This is a clip where he's on the Joe Rogan podcast talking about evolution but, but if we don't you. think if we don't think people are important then what do we think is important i guess it's that's what i'm saying not necessarily that we don't think people are important but if 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 evolution is real and if there is this is constant i don't know yes evolution is real to deny that is like denying that the earth is a globe the evidence is just overwhelmingly against you and not only would you have to deny mountains of evidence in both cases you have to think that there's a bunch of people that are conspiring to maintain this lie but it's 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 visible like you can measure it in certain animals you, you can measure adaptation yeah okay so this is a line from creationists that i really don't like it implies that all the evolution that we've seen is just adaptation the issue of course is that this distinction that they try to make has no substance because if we take their line of reasoning that things just go through adaptations well what happens when things go through so many adaptations that they're unrecognizable from what they were before? Would that not be evolution? This is basically the same argument of, oh, that's an example of microevolution, not of macroevolution. As though there's some kind of clear boundary between these two. However, another thing I have against the term adaptation being used is I tend to view adaptation more as an individual organism changing to their environment. Evolution, on the other hand, works on an entire species rather than individuals. Sure, there will be individuals within a group that will have an advantage, but they're born with that advantage. And in this sense, yes, adaptation and evolution are two different things, but you can also see evolution happening. But there's no evidence that evolution, in fact, I think we've kind of given up on the idea of evolution. The theory of evolution as articulated by Darwin is like kind of not true. Wait, what? Since when have we given up on the theory of evolution? A more accurate statement would be, we've kind of just given up on germ theory. And the only reason why it is more accurate is because there are individuals out there that have stopped believing in germ theory. However, when you ask people that know what they're talking about rather than random people on the internet who have gotten views from being contrarians, you'll find that they all believe in either evolution or germ theory, whatever one they know what they're talking about. Like, of course, Matt Powell and Kent Hovind have given up on the theory of evolution, but they never really accepted the theory of evolution in the first place. Right. In, what, in what sense? Well, in the most basic sense, the idea that, you know, all life emerged from a single cell organism and over time, and there would be a fossil record of that, and there's not. There's, there's no fossil record? That's strange. I distinctly remember seeing all kinds of fossil records. In fact, my favorite fossil record actually is the one that shows the evolution of land mammals to whales. Not that kind of whales, the one that swims. There is a fossil record showing the evolution from Pachycetus, which is now extinct, right up to the modern whales. The Pachycetus was a land-dwelling mammal, which is something which modern-day whales are pretty clearly not. However, we can look to the fossil record and see how between the Pachycetus and the modern-day whale, there were semi-aquatic mammals. We can see these mammals evolve over time, and the modern-day whale looks exactly how you would expect it to look if it evolved from these mammals. We can see the exact same kind of thing with humans. There is a fossil record showing the evolution from Australopithecus avarensis to modern day Homo sapiens. So to say that there is no fossil record is absurd because the fossil record is one of the main pillars of evolution. If you were to successfully somehow debunk it, which good luck with that, you would upend the scientific community. And There's not a fossil record of uh, transitionary species, like species that are adapting to its environment. There's and they tons develop. of record of right. adaptation, and you see it in your own life. I mean, I have a lot of dogs. I, I see adaptation in dogs, you know, through the sure um, through litter to litter. But Well, that is a form of evolution, species changing over time. And what exactly is this litter adapting to? Often when it comes to dog breeding, it's selecting traits that they want to breed for. This is a selection pressure, albeit one from humans, but there are also selection pressures in nature. No, there's no evidence at all that, none, zero, that, you know, people 
you know, evolve seamlessly from a single cell amoeba. No, there's not. There's not. There's no chain in the fossil record of that at all. Well, given that I can easily find a chain in the fossil records from the early great apes to modern day humans, that is evidence. Now, it is a little bit trickier to find stuff before that. However, there is evidence out there. I've found articles detailing how humans came about from the first life forms on Earth. This kind of stuff has to come from the fossil record, unless you want to delve into conspiracy, but, I mean, it's not too different to what Tucker's already doing. Except Tucker Carlson is alluding to a conspiracy, he hasn't yet outright said anything. And that's why you don't actually hear people, you hear them make reference to evolution, because the theory of adaptation is clearly, obviously true. Well, the theory of evolution isn't just the fossil record, it isn't just showing what happened, but is also explaining how it happened. The fossil record doesn't explain anything like natural selection, but the theory of evolution does. There are a lot of aspects to evolution. Uh, speciation is another one, uh, radiometric dating is a big part of it. So yeah, it's not just the fossil record, and the fact that Tucker Carlson doesn't seem to recognize this shows that he doesn't really know what he's talking about. But Darwin's theories totally un that's why it's still a theory almost 200 years later you know um no th we have not found that at all uh it's the uh it's just a theory again can someone please educate these people on what a theory means in the scientific sense a theory isn't just oh this is what we think might be happening that is a hypothesis a theory has been tested. I know Tucker Carlson would like to think that there's no difference whatsoever between his conspiracy theory and a scientific theory, but there is. Just because they contain the same word, it doesn't mean that they mean the same thing. And I can't even guess, I mean, I have my own theories on it, but they're not proven. If we're talking in a strictly scientific sense, you would have hypotheses, though I kind of doubt that you would even have hypotheses because hypotheses are usually pretty detailed and can be shown to be true or false. What are your theories? God created people, you know, distinctly, and animals. Okay, so that is definitely not a theory. I would hardly even call it a hypothesis because really we can't test that. Though to be fair, that is because it lacks information. If we refine it and say that, I don't know, God created the earth and humans 6,000 years ago, okay, then we have something that we can test. We can use things like that, I don't know, the radiometric dating thing that I talked about earlier to show that the earth is definitely older than 6,000 years. And not only that, the fossils on the earth are older than 6,000 years old. I mean, I think that's like, I think what every person on earth thought until the mid 19th century actually right but the, <laughs> it's not but, a new idea i mean people had ideas of evolution in the 18th century it's just in the 19th century when we came across a really good idea of evolution but i do want to point out that what he's saying here is identical to a flat earth argument well everyone used to believe that the earth was flat several thousand years ago so it's not a new idea however the difference between now and then is that we have a lot more evidence we can back up the theory of evolution we can back up the Earth being a globe. They they didn't have computers. They didn't have a, a general understanding that we have today of the process. Do you think we understand more now? Yes. Really? You don't think that we understand more today? We understand way less. We understand so little that we're actually sitting here allowing like a bunch of greedy, stupid, childless, childless software engineers in Northern California to like flirt with the extinction of mankind. To say that we understand way less today is to ignore the age that we are living in. Sure, we could bring up the obvious thing of computers, but we could also talk about how we can sequence genes now. Something that 500 years ago, they didn't even know it existed. There are precisely zero serious arguments that can be made to say that as a species, we know less now than we did 200 years ago. To argue for that, you would essentially have to argue for Parsifarianism. And I don't think Tucker Carlson is a believer in the flying spaghetti monster. Because somehow we've all been duped into believing that genetics are real. Now, to be fair, there are probably people that would think that genetics aren't real, like, I don't know, virus deniers. Anyway, as for that last bit, the software engineers flirting with the extinction of mankind, I 
I have no idea what he's on about there. And I also do not think that it's related to evolution. I mean, it would be amazing if he could relate that to evolution, but I don't have that much faith in his cognitive abilities. That is also where the clip ends, so I assume that's where the talk of evolution finishes. Anyway, from watching that, I don't think Tucker Carlson has looked into this to any extent. His arguments are worse than Kent Hovind's arguments, and that's really saying something. Each of these DNA strands has to be unwound, copied, and put in this egg. 100 eggs. I'm sometimes 300 eggs. Does the fish know she's doing this? Okay, maybe that's debatable, but at the very least, Tucker Carlson has given me the impression that he hasn't really talked to anyone about it. His arguments are really simple to the extent that they can easily be debunked. It doesn't take much effort to do. But it also kind of does make me wonder why people take him seriously, although that is a larger discussion that I probably shouldn't get into right now. Anyway, I think that's a good place to end the video. Leave a like and subscribe if you like this video. Leave a comment letting me know what you'd like to see me do for future videos. I actually have a pretty big one coming up that I'm working on. As always, a big shout out to my $20 or more patrons. Huge R's, MC Nutkin, Vermont1777, Tony C, Rosanna Keller, Kid Vicious, Sarge Campbell, Definitely Not NASA, Maury, Richard M. Chapman, Kaylee, and Fist Wizard. If you want to support me financially, you can do so on Patreon. There should be a link there. Or you could buy me a coffee. I will see you in the next video. Between you and me, thank you for watching.